this is the, uh, the email address here. I haven't got a pointer here. So you can see the email address up here. If you'd like a copy of this presentation, please, if you email this address, then we will send that to you for no charge. Okay. And that will save you taking all the photos and that. You can still take the photos, but just we try and make it easy. Okay, so this presentation is Commercial Property Finance Made Simple. And Helen actually tells me that that's actually really boring. So, do you reckon it is? It's Saturday afternoon, so my job is to keep you awake. So I've got the hard, I'm on the hard yards here. So what we're going to talk about is called free money. Is anyone interested in free money? Yes. That's better than made simple, right? So what we're going to talk about is free money and how you get free money. Do people believe there is such a thing? No. I've got a doubter? There is. And we're going to show you it's happening right now. There's free money out there. And there's people in the room here that if they do the numbers, the numbers must work for them. Because all this is is about numbers. That's all I do all day. There's no emotion. It doesn't have to be nice. It doesn't have to be pretty. Do the numbers work? It's commercial. That's what it's all about. Okay, so there's the email address. Put your name, your mobile number and postcode. Here's the disclaimer. And as we're on video, we'll leave this for longer than five seconds so that you can all read it. But basically what it's saying is that, and this came down to the question that was asked before, if you read the bottom line, you should always consult your own tax, legal and accounting advisors before advising in, in any transaction. So that's simple, right? You've got to have your structure in place and you've got to have a team in place. This is not home loans. You've got to have a team. That's how it works. So even though that, that's sort of a bit of a long-winded slide, it's actually really important at, at the bottom. Now the other thing too, as we go through, if you've got questions on the way through, welcome to answer them as well. Okay, residential versus commercial. So on a residential property, I'm not sure where this sits now. I think it's about 90%. It floats around 90, 95. That's where it sits. You can go up to that sort of figure. If you go back sort of five years ago, there was loans being done 100, 105. But now it's come down. Simple valuations, they're done within a few days. And they don't charge you anything. So the valuations are free. And 30-year loan terms. So that's a pretty standard home loan. Cheaper interest rates, we'll put a question mark there and we'll kind of come to the interest rates later on. You can see what's happening in commercial now. A lot of opportunity for you people in the room right now. You should be really excited. Really excited. Because it's, it's on. Okay, 3 to 5% yield is normally what you see in residential. So most people buy residential because they want it to go up in value. The after capital gain. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that that truck stopped about two years ago and it's starting to back up and has been backing up, which is why these rooms are filling up. Because they're coming out of residential and they're thinking there's something else and there's cash flow. Okay. So in commercial, we can get up to 80% of the property value. Commercial valuations, the difference between a home loan valuation and a commercial valuation is number one, the bank or the lender will normally charge you. Number two, they're normally about $1,200 plus. And number three, they normally can take up to 10 working days. That's what the value is given. So is everyone getting excited about these valuations? They are a big, uh, <laughs> they're a problem. Let me go that way, put it politely, they're a problem, right? But you've got to deal with it, they're part of the process. But you know that it's coming through, the bank or the lender is going to ask you to pay for those. And some of them, if you go out into the regional areas, it can get more expensive as well. Okay, 15 year loan terms, that's the normal loan term we see in commercial, but we can go uh, 20, 25, one years, two years, just depends. So it's all over the place. But the average is probably about 15. And of that 15, it would probably be a five year interest only and a 10 year principal and interest. Cheaper interest rates, we're going to come back to that. And so this is what it's all about yield. And the bit at the bottom, this is why you buy commercial. And this is the only reason you buy commercial because of the tenant. Commercial is all commercial real estate is all about the tenant. 
because the tenant is your only money in. Everything else is an expense. So when you get your tenant, look after them. Look after them because they're paying everything. Everyone lives off that tenant. So the key thing to get out of this is for commercial, it's all about the tenant. That's not the same with a residential property because a residential property, they can come and go. Okay, so commercial finance is always on a case-by-case -case basis. So you can have the same commercial property and it can have completely different values. It can be vacant. Who'd buy, who'd, who'd buy a, ver a vacant commercial property in here now? We've got one. We've got a punter at the front. Okay. No, no, it's vacant. Okay, so we've got, that's okay. There's, there's a, there, we've got something for you. There's something for everyone. Okay, but what we're illustrating here, so this same property, if it was vacant, and you saw in the room there, there's less buyers, right? So what's, what do you think's happened to the price? It's down, right? But if we go through and we get a tenant on a month-to-month -month lease, we'll probably get more people. On a one-year lease, five-year lease, 10-year lease plus options. Who'd buy, who'd buy tenant on 10-year lease plus options? I'm missing a few people here. Let me say it again. Who would buy a tenant on, property with tenant on 10-year lease plus options? Everyone. Everyone, right? So you saw the difference, that same property from when it was vacant to well, what changed? The property didn't change, only the tenant. Yeah, you see that? So that's how important the tenant is. And then it depends who the tenant is as well, because if the tenant is BHP, or it's maybe a minor tenant, it depends who the tenant is, to the quality. If it's a national tenant, then your yield's going to come down even lower, because everyone wants national tenants. And then the, the property may have development potential as well, <laughs> excuse me, may have development potential as well, and that can affect the value as well. That, that, we won't go into it, but that question came before, we do send developers and commercial as well. Okay, key thing. So in commercial, the only way this property can be priced, or we know what we can do on that property, is you have to send us the information memorandum. So we're going to do a case study later on, and if you have a look in here, this is what we ask for from, from you, in PDF or whatever, electronic, and from that, that gives us a pretty good guide as to what this property is about. But don't believe everything in here. <laughs> okay? <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That's why, we, if we can, we actually like to see the lease as well. Because the agent's saying, this is what's going to happen. And we say, okay, we'll just, just make sure. That's, that's, the, that's the best way to put it, okay? But this is the starting point. So when you want us to price, you just send us the electronic version of this. And this, this here will tell us all about the property, the things that we need to know, the key things, right? And that's an easy for you too, because all you've got to do is press the forward button and send it. So it's really easy. And we're going to come back to you really quickly. Okay. So what are the steps to getting a commercial loan? This is what we get asked all the time. What's the rate? Or sorry, how much can I borrow? And what's the rate? It's actually normally what's the rate first. So <laughs> people always want to know how much it is. How much can I borrow and what's the rate? So we issue what's called a commercial loan guide. Now, if you go back to when you bought your residential investment property, you would have gone to the bank or to your broker, to your home loan broker, and you would have said, okay, I want to buy a residential property. And the broker or the bank would have said, okay, you're going to buy the property. How much do you earn? What's your wages? What are your expenses? And how much deposit do you have? And then they would have worked it all out in a little calculator. And then they would have said to you, okay, on, those, on, that, on what you have there, then you can borrow this amount. So we do something very similar in commercial, but remember every commercial property is different, so we can only give you a guide. So when we do this for you, we get your numbers, and if you send it to the email that we gave you at the start, we, we can tell you how much you can borrow. And that's a guide until we actually receive this sheet. Once we receive that sheet that you've got, then we know pretty well precisely what you can borrow. 
Okay. So really, it's like a home loan pre-approval. So it's going to ask how much deposit, how are you going to pay the loan, and then it's going to come to an approximate loan amount and indicative rate. So it's pretty easy. In commercial, two things, and we're going to say this all day long, deposit and loan. The question was asked before about the deposit, deposit and loan. So whenever you're thinking about doing these deals, two words, deposit, three words actually, deposit and loan. All right, deposit and loan. That's all you've got to know in commercial. They're the key things. We're always looking for the deposit. Just get it from somewhere, especially in this market. Okay, so once we've given you, once we've given you that sort of like a pre-approval, commercial loan guide, then you go and make an offer to purchase the property. We submit the loan, it's approved and it settles. So the deposit, here, so here it is again. So what are the three words? Deposit and? No. Deposit and? No. Good. Okay, that's all you've got to know in commercial. Is that simple? Deposit and loan. If you come to us with a big enough deposit, you've got the loan. That's how it works. Everyone's smiling. We're going to show you. Okay, so how much deposit do you need? Where's the, where's the deposit coming from? Some people have sold property and they've got cash. Other people have money sitting in an offset account. Or they may have equity in a residential property. If you've got equity in a residential property, you've got to get that out. And then with that deposit, you're going to buy the commercial property. Or, oh sorry, let me go back a step. So this deposit, this cash or equity, that's the key to getting the deal done. So what do we normally see on the other side? You've got the deposit and the loan is 70% normally. Now remember we said we can go higher and we can go lower. We can go 70, 75, 80, or we can go lower. But for most professional investors, and we're going to show you a picture of a professional investor later on from, from Helen, they do about 70% commercial loan. Okay, is there any questions on any of this? Everyone wants to go home, right? I got it. Make it quick. <laughs> it's, it's Saturday afternoon. <laughs> All right. Ge so here's this, what was up, we said before. Generally, the larger the deposit, the easier it is to get finance. So this is where it's different to residential. In residential, you've got to pass all these tests. And you've got to have your home loan expenses. You've, you've, got, you've got to get it so it services. In commercial, if it doesn't service and you put in a larger deposit, then we can get it to work. So now you know why we need deposit and loan. And so when you ring us up and you say, Graham, how much, how much can we borrow? What do you think I'm going to ask you first? How big is your deposit? See, you, people can do my job. It's <laughs> simple, right? That's what I'm going to ask you. And you're going to say one of two things. You're going to actually tell me how much you've got, and then I'm going to say to you really quickly, okay, this is a guy and what you can do. Or you're going to say to me these words, how much do I need? And as soon as I hear that, we're out. Because that means you're normally going to go running around to find it. Because the people that really have the money, they tell you the number. So, the, uh, so don't, when you ring me, don't say, how much do I need? Because <laughs> that's a big, big, big warning sign. Okay. So here's a, this is a scenario. This is a typical, this here is a typical Helen scenario. This is sort of the bread and butter stuff. Married couple, Mr. and Mrs. This was done on a Sydney property, $900,000 was a clear title. He earned 90000 A couple of kids, everyone's got a credit card, you always have a credit card. Does everyone have credit cards? Tell the bank you've got credit cards, don't ever say you don't have them because they'll come after you. Everyone's got credit cards, all right? When you fill out the form, you've got a credit card. Okay, and he's buying a commercial property for a million dollars. The property has $80,000 income, and that's net income, because remember the tenant pays all the outgoings. So what's the yield on this property? 8%, right? Easy. 8%. Tenant pays all the lease, pays all the outgoings. Whoopsie. What is the next one? Oh, put just for you, just for you. Okay, this one here. <laughs> All right. 
You can, you can email me. I'll send you the whole thing. <laughs> okay. If you want me to go back, let me know. Okay, so here we go. So the, he's buying this property. He's a, basically this mum and dad just buying, buying commercial property for cash flow. So we've got to pay some stamp duty. So the total funding was 1050. So what are the two parts? Deposit and loan. What are the two parts? Deposit and loan. Got it, right. So we're going to flip it around. We're going to do loan and deposit. That doesn't matter. So we know on the loan we can get 70% as a guide, because it's a normal commercial purchase. So we need the deposit or the gap. We've got a future investor there. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> good to see. That's why we work. It's not for the money. Money's nothing. Why are we working? Okay, Three, 350,000. So it's either cash or it's in an offset account or a line of credit or it's equity in a property such as a home residential or another property. So we're going to get this deposit from somewhere. So when you walk out of here tonight, you're going looking for deposits. Family, friends, whatever. You're looking for deposits. We got it? Because we're going to show you how to make money with that deposit. It doesn't even have to be yours. Just get it from somewhere. Okay. So how's this loan going to be paid? It's pretty straightforward. 8% yield. Now, this, note the loan rate on this, 5%. 80,000 rent. Tenant pays all the outgoings. 50,000 loan. So it's got to be positive, right? That's why you're here. True? 2,000, 2000 a week. Uh, 2,000, 2,000 a week would be good. 2,000 a month, approximately. So that's what Helen does all day long. Her, her people come to her, this is what she's doing. Just making the money. Is it good to have someone that's going to make you money? It is, right? She's really good. She's going to make you money. You go with her. She's going to make you money. Okay. So how, how does the bank see the deal, though? It's, it's positive, right? So when we, t when we send it to the bank, they're going to do what's called shade the rent. So whenever you hear the word shade, means it's like they're going to give you a haircut, all right? They're going to discount it. So the first thing is they're going to discount the rent, and then they're probably going to assess it. These rates have come back slightly, but maybe a 9% what we call assessment rate, because they want to allow for future increases. And then interest cover, and interest cover, which is explained here, is where you divide the income by the interest expenses. So to give an example, if you had 140,000 rent come in, and the loan was 100,000 in interest, that's a 1.4 times cover. So it's covered, the bank knows there's more coming in. So the higher the ratio, the stronger the deal. So we've seen some of these deals, I saw one the other day, I think it was, it was heading up towards two and a half, three. Like we see some pretty high yielding properties. They're there. And in fact, I saw one that was, in fact, I've, let me go back a step, I'm aware of one that was actually in Brisbane itself and I think it was over nine. So you, you, people, you people are really fortunate. You don't have to go far at all. you just got to walk out the door. You've got to get the deposit and the property's down the road there somewhere. <coughs> a, lot of, a lot of the people that come from Melbourne and Sydney buy in Queensland. You've got a local advantage. We do a lot of property from Coolangatta all the way up to Noosa, Rockhampton, Townsville. Townsville. Helen does lots of properties in, in Queensland. You've got some of the best deals. You feeling good about that? Yeah? I'm serious, you've got, you got some of the best properties where Helen buys properties and her students buy properties. Okay, so two to one's a strong, strong interest cover. Okay, so when this was sent to the bank, you probably can't read it at the back there because it's of all the fine print, but basically what it's saying is they start off with the income, which is 90,000, and I haven't got a point here, but if you can see where it says commercial purchase, when that went to the bank, they assess that they took it down from 80,000 to 68,000. So they've already trimmed it back. And then if you have a look at the residential loan, and I can't sort of quite reach up here, but the residential loan, they've done 28,000 on 350. Has someone got a calculator? What's 28 on 350? Can s someone tell me what, what that is? 
8%. So they've assessed that, that the deposit bit, the home loan, at 8%. And then the credit card, they've put that in as well. And then if you come down further, you'll see loan one, and the interest rate they've assessed that is at 9%. So this is a completely different deal to what you saw when you did your numbers. So what are we saying here? And if you go down further, then they do these other things as well. What we're trying to illustrate to you is that when you see the numbers, you don't know what the bank's going to do. You just don't know. You don't know what they're doing inside. So that's why we say to you, if you want to know how much you can actually borrow, send us an email, we'll send you a couple of sheets, and we'll tell you how much you can borrow. Because you're not going to be aware of what's going on here. So this is just to illustrate that there's how the bank assesses it, it's different. But it's still a good deal. This customer was making 25000 a year. So how you see the deal and how the bank sees the deal is completely different. It's completely different. Which is someone's asked about home loans before, and Andrew will tell you as well, and home loans now it's really changed. Really changed. So never forget in reality that you're buying a positive cash flow property. All the deals are, are positive. The banks love these properties. If you want to be friends with the bank, you start sending them, we, we do these types of deals. The banks cannot get enough of it because you're making money. Why would they want to be lending to a residential investor that's negative and losing money on the hope that it might go up in this market today? And they can come over here and you turn up as an investor and you've got a commercial property with a good tenant giving a nice income stream and it's making money. If you're the bank, who do you want? It's a no-brainer. Okay, so this is what we said before about serviceability sheets, worksheets. So if you want to know how much you can borrow, send us an email and then we can let you know how much you can borrow. Okay, simple numbers. So we've got to keep it simple and then we've got to talk about some free money, I guess, because it was simple and free, right? <laughs> simple and free. All right, okay, so the simple numbers are You've got to buy the property. So the money out. So in the count, have we got an accountant in the room? We've got debits and credits. They always sleep, the accountants. They always hide. I'm going to try and send you some work. You're an accountant? Okay. So if someone needs guidance about structure, you might, they might come and see you. All right? So what do we call it? Is it debit or credit the money out? Which one is it? It's a debit, okay. So we call it money out, because we're simple, but it, in accountancy, it's a debit. So we start with the purchase price. Whenever you're doing finance, you always start with the purchase price. That's it, doesn't matter what finance you're doing on property, you always start with the purchase price. Not the purchase price plus GST, not the purchase price plus stamp duty, because they're all taxes, the purchase price. That's your money out, and then you add your stamp duty, and we allow about 5%. It's different on different states. We'll see, go back. And so that's, that's your total money out. So that's your total debits. In accountancy speak, correct? So what do we need now? Credits, right? Money in. Ooh, nearly fell off. Okay. Ooh. Deposit and loan. That's familiar. <laughs> Where's the money going to come from? Deposit and loan. What do we need? Deposit and loan. Okay. And then the loan's got a service? Or maybe it doesn't. Because if your deposit's large enough, we can just do the loan. We're going to need the money in, which is your rent. Minus your money out. And away you go. So, purchase price. So now we're going to this scenario here we'll just come to. So have you all got this sheet here? Okay. So this is really important. These deals that we're showing you are real deals. The real deal. All right? This, it's been, the, these are real deals that are going on. So not this isn't stuff that we're going to promise to do this or whatever. Helen delivers. It gets delivered. So this here, this, this customer has bought for eight twenty-five. And we're it's in this is in Brisbane, isn't it? From sorry, Ben Lee. So it's in Brisbane, right? It's it's in Queensland. Yeah. So you see what I'm saying? This, this is where the good properties are, right? 
Helen's not going to pick the bad properties. She's going to pick the good properties. So this one here was put for eight twenty-five thousand. So we've got, remember, we've got the money out, five percent. Stamp duty and legals. Here's your total cost. So what's that? The debits, correct? So we've got the debits, all right? So what do we need now? The credits. Commercial loan, 70%, because it's an investor loan where they normally sit. We did a deposit and stamp duty. From, sorry, from the, let's go back. So from the home equity release, deposit and stamp duty. So the total funding is, all well your credits, 866,250. Is that simple? Easy, money out, money in. Now we've got to pay for it. So do we know this, do I actually even have to show you this is going to pay? You already know. When we send it to the bank, we already know, because it's positive, right? So here comes the rent. This one here was done at a rate of 4.7. So how much is it positive? $2,000 a month. Who would like $2,000 a month? Just coming in, dropping in the account each month. That's why you're here, right? <laughs> if, you, if you want that, that's why you're here. So the question is, what was, what was the return on investment for this person when they're putting the money in? Can anyone tell me what's the return? I've heard eight. And what did you say at the front? So can we say it louder? <laughs> Almost infinite? <laughs> so it's like free money? Okay. How much they put in? They put no money in. They borrowed everything. Everyone's gone quieter than quiet. <laughs> this is free money. They didn't put any money in. And yet they're getting now $2,000 a month. This was all borrowed. You're in a climate now where the interest rates are so cheap that just about nearly any deal that you buy in commercial is probably going to generate you income. So that's why we talk about free money. It's real. This is how Helen built her, her portfolio. She showed you what she's got. Each time you do one of these, it gets stronger and stronger. Because you go to the bank and you're making $25,000 a year, and you turn up with another one, now you're making $50,000 a year. It just, it just multiplies. So that's why we talk about the free money. So is there things as free money? There is. And we're going to show you some more free money later on. It's real. This person did not put a cent in. It's really, really important to get that. So if you've got a home, I did a, I did a, a guy in Melbourne, he owned his home, sitting there, and we did this sort of deal with him. He's now getting that $2,000 a month. He's as happy as. Still the same home, still lives in it. Property didn't change. All he did was use what he's got. So here he is, $2,000 a month. So is everyone excited about that? If I gave you $2,000 a month, would you be excited about that? I would be. But you probably want more, right? Question at the back. So if can you just probably uh, uh, yeah, with, the, with the speaker on? Yeah. So in my mind, that if you are releasing equity in your home, they're mm -hmm. giving you $288,000 in cash, they're going to want that paid back. So it's still, you're going to end up paying extra on your, on your home mortgage. Okay, so the first thing is, banks never give you anything. Yeah. All right? <laughs> That's the first thing, right? We got that? The banks never give Which you anything. Which is my point. So okay. it's not entirely free. So, no, no, and that's right. So what happened was you borrowed the money. It wasn't your money. You borrowed it on your home, and we put the calculation in there. If we go back, let's go back. Up here, that's a loan. And that loan, 
all the loans together were done at 4.7 per cent. So that's including the deposit. It's blended. Sorry, that's why it says blended. See how it says this, this figure here, blended? That's because there's a loan on the commercial property and a loan on the home. Thank you. That's what I wanted to say. Okay. Know. So I apologise. That's why I probably made it clear. But they didn't put any money in, right? Yeah. Do they? Okay. <laughs> But if they got interest only, and I'm not saying you do this, right? You've got to go and see your accountant. And with that cash flow, got a, another property, they might get more cash flow. Look, obviously at some stage they've got to pay it back. But if you're making that sort of money each month, would that help paying it back? It would help me. <laughs> so if anyone wants to give me 2000 a month, I'm in, okay? It would help. So it helps pay it back. Of course, and that commercial property, given what's happening now, may maybe start to start to move up. Okay. Okay, so let's do the same loan because we always asked about self-managed super fund loans as well, right? So they, these used to be really, really popular, and the reason was because the deposit was sitting in the fund. That's where it sat. So we want to deposit a loan. We know if we go into a self-managed super fund or industry fund, sometimes they transfer it over, we've got a deposit. We're only ever looking for these deposits. Get them as quick as you can from somewhere. So this one here, the self-managed super fund, so we, we said, okay, let's, if we did this property using the same numbers, how does it look? So what's the first thing that you notice about how much we borrowed? It's a lower gearing. Okay? So they're normally done, self managed super fund loans are normally done at 60%. It's a lower gearing. It doesn't matter because you've got the deposit in the fund anyway. You don't have to go and find this thing. It's already sitting there in a lot of cases. And if it's in an industry fund, you may, and that's what you have to get financial advice for us. Everything we're doing today is information only. You must go and see your accountant or whoever first. You may want to transfer it from there to the Self-managed super fund, and then buy a property. And you'll buy it in the fund, obviously. Okay, so we're at 60%. Here's your deposit. This was sitting in the, in the fund. Your total funding, here's your rent. Look at the interest rate. Ooh, it's expensive. And the other thing too, the accountants make us do P&I, principal interest, don't you? I'm, I'm not sure why, <laughs> but, but they do. So normally these lo loans are done as principal interest. And why? Because we're doing what the accountant or, the, or your financial advisor says. Okay, so that's how it's structured. But this one here is still positive, 28,000 a year. See how this is working? It's always positive. So they're receiving just under 2,500 a month into the fund. Okay, is there any questions on these ones? Question. Yep. A question regarding uh, previous, your previous loan. Yes. When oh, sorry. The oh, thank you. If, if, you're borrow, if you're drawing down from your own property, your mm -hmm. own home, let's say, mm. to buy a commercial property, yep. and the commercial property is owned in a, a structure, mm -hmm. How do the, the it's a blended loan, but how do you how, how does the the income get paid back to the personal loan? Okay, so if it's when we're talking about blended and we can get into hybrids and everything, but let's what we're what we're actually talking about is there's two separate loans done. Yeah. So in that scenario where that guy bought that property and he had the clear title on the house. It was structured, it was a 70% 70, 70 commercial loan in the name of the company as trustee for the trust. Yep. And the 30, 35% was done as a, uh, well, it's an investment loan in their personal names. Now, there's other ways you can structure things as well and cross things over, but we try and keep them separate as we can. So does that sort of answer your question? So they're two separate loans. There's two separate loans, but yep. where the, the ink, the, the, the the loans are paid from the tenant. The tenant, and the tenant then pays 
obviously the, the customer and he okay. pays both those loans. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. remember, the money's always coming in more. Sure. It's a dream life, isn't it? If you had a life where this money was coming in more all the time, Thank you. that's the dream life, isn't it? That's what, that's what you're looking for. So, yeah, they're both being paid off. Hopefully that answers you. <laughs> okay. Quick numbers. So what's our purchase price? So you want a quick way to work these out. And it's not on the floor here. I'm just moving so I don't stand on my phone. Okay. The quick numbers. So if you've got a normal commercial loan, you divide your deposit by 0.35. So see how we keep coming back to the deposit all the time? It's always about the deposit and the loan. Deposit is just so important. And you can, you can get these. Okay, so it's a guide only. So let's do one. So if we've got $200,000 deposit and you ring me up, what's the price of the pro property, commercial property that you can buy? You just divide by 0.35. 571 we've got? 571. This, this one here? This one here? Yeah? So how simple is that? So whatever you deposit, divide by 0.35, that'll give you a really good guide if you're a normal commercial customer. I'm talking about pay slips and everything else. As, you, as to what you can do. And let's just show you the numbers that work. So if you had deposit, so you came to me and you said I've got a deposit of four hundred thousand. What's the purchase price of your commercial property? One point one four. One point one four. Two eight five seven. One point one four. See how easy that was? That's all I do all day. How much did you deposit? I get divided. Here it is, it shows you the numbers work. Okay, so what happens if it's a self-managed super fund loan? Or what we call a lease only, and we're gonna to come to these, because we do lots of these. You divide by 0.4. Okay, so if you wanna get a self-managed super fund loan, you wanna buy a property, a self-managed super fund, or you wanna do what's called a lease only, a lease stock loan, you just divide your deposit by 0.4. So let's do one. So if you've got $200,000, what's the purchase price of the commercial property you can buy in your self-managed super fund? You can, you can do it. How much? 500. 500, correct. See how easy that is? You don't have to go through all the, you know, everything else. Just that, but this is a guide, because that's what you really want to know. Just, you know. Give us a bit of a ballpark where we're going to sit. We're not at a million, two million or whatever. Where, where, where are we sitting? And this is how the numbers play out. Okay, so if we've got 400,000, what's the purchase for? You can do it. Quick, quick, come on. One million. So that's a guide as to what you can buy. It's that easy, right? Now, once we get all your papers and everything, we can then fine tune it and say, look, this is what you can really do. But as you walk out of this room, you just want a guide as to what you can do. And just when we're talking about deposit, just so we're clear, we don't, you don't have to have three, four hundred thousand dollars deposit. I did a loan the other day and we, we only do this when we're working with Helen. We don't do it if they come in off the internet or general public because we say the minimum loan size 300, sometimes 500, depends on who they are. But I actually did a, a, young, a young lady, she was buying, and she was young, she was with her dad, and she was buying a property in Melbourne, and I think the loan was 180,000. So when you think commercial, you don't have to think really, really big numbers. Some of the commercial properties you can buy, we've just done some stuff up at Sippy Downs, I think they were 250,000. So don't be scared off by the word commercial. You can start with a little deposit. It doesn't have to be huge. People are feeling more relaxed about that now? Yeah, a little bit? You don't have to have big numbers. Just start, what do they say with the little thing? What's that thing on the TV? Where the guy goes with the little things grow or something? What is it, how's it, from little things? Big things grow, all right? So that's how it works. Okay. 
How do we get sidetracked there? Right, so the key thing is you don't need a large deposit, you just need a deposit. And that's the numbers. We've got a, a question here. For, hang on, so can, can we get the microphone? <laughs> this is a general question. It's not advice and it's information only. So the question is, it's general, this is information only. Can you combine cash and SMSF money to come up with a deposit? That's the answer. Okay, so we've got, a, we've got a punter. See that? <laughs> He's looking at how I can find it. And we've got an accountant. You got a card? You got a card? You just should meet. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All right? Do you see how this works? I'm going to get you some business. <laughs> Do you want more business? Sure. What's more business? Anyone else? Anyone need a good accountant? Sorry, what's your first name? It's Pavina. Pavina. If anyone needs a good accountant? Pavina here is going to help your structure and entity, all right? And you're going to look after them because they're going to be part of the community, right? Do you hear that? So does anyone need an accountant? You come and see Pavina? Pavina, all right. She's already given you free advice. You've got that, right? And you know the first one's free and after that they get you. So be careful, all right? <laughs> all right. See how we're building businesses? We, we help you. Okay, so let's talk about interest rates. Now these rates are, are general, there's specials and discounts and everything else going on at the moment. So this is just a guide, right? So an 80% loan is 4.8, 70 is 4.7, 70 is 4.5. Oh, I'm going too quick. Well, we'll th these are, okay. So what we're trying to illustrate here is that as you put in the larger deposit, the rate's gonna come down. So these are a guide only, right? So some of these 80% ones and even the 75, we can go cheaper on these now. But what we're trying to show you here, and you're seeing it, is as you, this deposit gets larger, the rate comes down. That's what we're trying to illustrate here. So we're down to about 4.3. Is that, uh, that there's just the commercial. Just the commercial. Okay, let's talk about fixed interest rates. This is why this thing has really taken off. One year, 3.9. Do you reckon you can find a property in Brisbane that yields more than 3.9? Remember the free money? It's there. Look at it. Two years, 3.7. Three years, 3.6. So the... Question, yeah? Are these fixed interest only rates? Yes. Do your pardon? <laughs> For goodness sake, I think is what you're trying to say. <laughs> it's a good thing we didn't have the microphone. <laughs> Why is the bank still calculating at 9% in that uh, earlier, much earlier slide? when I believe the, uh, the God and these little helpers have uh, s said that it's 2.5 is the factor now, 2.5% on okay. top of the loan. So good question, so you're talking about home loans? Only home loans, is it? Home, look, the assessment rates probably come back a bit from 9%, it's still well over, what we're trying to illustrate, it's well over what you're gonna pay the true rate. Yeah, but that what you're talking about, you're seeing in the media now, is they realise that they pushed this thing. So the reason the property prices came back in residential, and we saw this about two, three years ago, as soon as they did what they did with the interest only loans, is they made it hard to get finance. And that part of the reason was they had very high buffers, and they took out all the investors. As soon as you take the buyers out of the market, there's only one thing the property prices can do. It couldn't do anything else, because you took the buyers out. So that's why now they're saying, okay, we need the buyers back, and what are they doing? They're reducing the assessment rate. So when you want to play with property prices, you play with finance, because people need money to buy this stuff. That's, that's how they determine how the market goes up and down. Okay, so you can see these. Now these are, these are indicative rates for full doc, um, full doc customers. They're pretty cheap. Okay, commercial loan costs. So we'll whiz through this. This is on most loans. There's an application fee. The commercial valuation we mentioned before. 
The commercial valuation is normally 10 working days, normally $1,200 $1, plus, so it's quite expensive and you pay for it. Lenders legals, ongoing fees. Some of these ongoing fees, some of them do nil. We did a loan, it was a self-managed super fund loan for one of the major banks a while back, it was $100 a month. $100, I looked at it, I said, is this a year? No, they said, it's a month. He still went ahead, he bought it. And early repayment fees. Okay, so if you go through a non-bank commercial lender, the first question, if someone's recommending a non-bank to you, is what's the early repayment fees? Yeah? Someone's talking to you about a non-bank? Yeah. They make their money when you get out. So you can't do that in home loans now, it's illegal, but you can still do it in commercial. So if you can, ask them what's it cost to get out, because everyone can get into a loan, it's getting out is the cost. Okay, government fees, stamp duty, mortgage duty, these are all pretty basic. Other fees, solicitor. So I think you had Russell here this morning. Did you have Russell here? I saw his card out there. Yeah? So you've got solicitor. He's really good, Russell, too. He does a lot. He's good. Buyer's agent. Okay, this is where it is really different to residential. Buyer's agents operate in commercial. There's a lot of stuff that's done off market that you don't even get access to. So buyers, there's lots, of, not lots, but there's quite a few buyers agents in commercial. So they come in and they'll charge a fee to act on your behalf. And they will get you properties before they even go to market. They don't even, don't even don't, sometimes don't even get advertised. So just be aware we do see a lot of buyers agents in there and they're snapping up these deals before they hit, hit the internet. So just be aware those guys are out there, they're out there. Okay, commercial loan features, interest only, this was asked before, interest only, we do interest only, principal interest if it's self-managed super fund, offset account, I don't know why, I don't know why we're always asked, does it have an offset account? Normally they don't. If you want an offset account, get a home loan, pay your home loan down first. Don't pay down the commercial loan, pay down your home loan. So they normally don't have an offset account. And when you're paying down, I didn't say pay out, when you're paying down that home loan so that you pay less interest, make sure that you're able to get it out again if you need it for a deposit. Don't pay these things off. Pay them down. You can still pay them down to zero. You asked before, but we're going to pay them off. Pay them down. And then you'll have that be able to draw up any time you want with no questions. Just press the button and it's yours. <laughs> Does it pay into the home loan or put it into the offset? Well, you can do either as long as you can redraw either. So if the home loan's got a redraw, you can use the home loan. If the home loan doesn't, you pay it into the offset. Yeah. Okay. Loan term. The key thing is don't pay them off, pay them down. Loan term. Discussed that before. Annual reviews. Okay, so you've got to watch out. Some of the banks have annual reviews on their loans. Depends on how much lending you've got and they'll want to see your accounts every year. Now look, if you're buying positive cash flow commercial property, really not going to be a big issue because they're all, they're all positive. They're really, they're really they're targeting these annual reviews for businesses, trading businesses. Just so happens you get caught up in that as well. Some of the banks don't do annual reviews, it just depends who it is. When you say an annual review, yep. you've got, let's say you've got a five-year fixed IRD. Yep. Yep. Well, it depends who the bank is, but yes, and how much lending you've got. So normally it cuts in, it depends on the bank, over a million dollars. But some banks don't do that. I think they go to two million and they don't review. So over a million dollars, they review. Uh, if the loan is over a million dollars, I'm, I'm giving you a guide, right? It depends on the bank and who it is. But I think it, you can go to two million with one bank and they don't review because they just do it internally. But it's something to be aware of. That's a very good question. Okay, so the question was, what's the downside of doing a review? The downside is that you've got to provide all your tax returns and all your papers every year to the bank, 
And if something did happen to the property value, they may say, okay, now we need to get that adjusted because it's gone down for some reason and for you to put some more money in. The value. The value's gone down. Yeah. So the value's based on rent. Well, there's a, yeah, generally, but there's other values that come into place as well, like replacement value. So and there's definitely a risk in, in how far you're leveraging this to go that there's some half <laughs> so, so there's definitely a risk, because it's all well and good when things are going well and everyone can make cash, but when there's a, a downturn, it's the ones who survive that can manage that risk. So do you have a guide on the buffer that you might want to have for something like that? A guide as to a buffer. Mm. Well, if, it, if you're going to have a, if there's an annual review and, yep. and it does go down, mm -hmm. then you're going to have to chuck money in, which I imagine if you're leveraged quite well, that may not be as easy to do. Well, that, that's true, right? And, and so, but generally you'll find that the properties that Helen is, are, is buying are positive cash flow, right? So you've got to remember if they're positive cash flow and the rents are starting to go up, which they normally do, then the properties normally, we're talking about normally, is worth more. Because what you just said before, the rent impacts it, right? Mm. So what, there's no sort of hard you set rule as to what's a buff or what's not, but the mere fact that you're doing 65% or 70% loan means that there's a third in there already, if that makes sense. So there's not actually a rule, but you'll, it, normally you'll get into a situation where there's a, a problem with cash flow when you're getting negative investment residential properties because once you start mounting those up it starts to it's, it's like a snowball right if you see it the inverse on the commercial side it's not actually a problem it's it, it's, it's it's building more so we don't it, there's no sort of hard fast rule if that makes sense yeah hopefully that's answered the question yeah it's not a, it's not a look let me go this way it's not a big deal that's the answer it's not it's, it's not a deal breaker you don't see it very often. i don't yeah it'd be very rare that we look if if they were buying development sites which don't have, then you can, that, that's when it really comes into play. Okay, moving on. Offer to purchase. So you do this in Queensland, you have a subject to finance clause. We normally see this for 28 days. 30, whoopsie, 30, 60 day settlement. Commercial loans generally take quicker, uh, longer, longer to settle. Now, Helen, what she does is sometimes she comes in really quickly. And I'm talking really quickly, within days, and says, yeah, we're just going to buy it. And everyone's spinning around, like, we, we, you see, yeah, we're buying this, okay. So there's ways that this can be played around with, and Helen does time versus money. So what do I mean by that? So if the normal person's going to take 30 to 60 days, has got subject to finance clause, and she comes in and she says, no, we know we've got the deposit, we know the lease is strong, we're going to go unconditional, or we're going to do something on this very quickly, she'll bring the price down. So you can play with price, time, okay. This is a submission. I actually just get pretty daunted by just looking at this thing. <laughs> this is, but this is a normal settlement, eight weeks. What do we do? We can speed it up. So don't, again, don't get freaked out about that. We can, we can speed it up. Okay, self-managed super fund commercial loans. We're still doing these. Look at the rates on these though. If you did the same loan probably a few years ago, we used to like, in the fours, but it's all a lot of it's non-bank stuff now. On the bigger stuff, you can still get cheap money, it, but it's got to be bigger. There's deals out there. Application fee, same thing. Legals, watch out on self-managed super fund, the legals, because they've got all the deeds to vet, two lots of deeds, trust deeds, vet, minimum loan size, Loan terms, so you've got bank versus non-bank. Liquidity, some, some of the banks used to check your liquidity, what other assets you had. So the key things they're looking at are these two things at the bottom when you're doing this type of loan, is what's your contributions and what's coming in from the rental income. So if you're going to do a self-managed super fund you've got, if, and your deposit's sitting in there or in the industry fund, they're the two things at the bottom they're going to look for. Low dot commercial loans. So this is for self-employed. So we f see a few of these, they want to borrow some money. Look at the rate on this, because there's less paperwork. So these rates are starting to really move up. 
up to 80% of the property value. Some have an accountant's declaration. Some use a BAS. Now, no dot commercial loans. Remember we said before about deposit? This is where it's different to home loans. Six and a half to seven and a half percent. Is that cheap? It's not. Maybe it is. If they're making a hundred thousand in a year and this person's just gonna sign, they're not too worried about the rate. It's true. Don't be driven by rate. It's not about rate. It's about what you're gonna make. All right? So this is a true what they call sign and go loan. It's a so you turn up with a deposit, sign, you've got to give them your name, address and everything else, your assets, and the loan was done from one to three years. It's a sign and go loan. That's what we call it, sign and go. And you can't put any income in there because it's a no-doc loan. You can't put income. So this is off the deposit. Now, obviously, you've, you've still got to, you know, you've got to be responsible with what you do. The thing is, though, this is a true no-doc commercial loan. Sign and go. And they're normally one to three years. So we would see someone come in and get this loan. In fact, they'll probably come in for about a year. They'll tidy up the place. And then they'll get out and they'll go back to mainstream lending. Okay, now is there any questions on this one? It's pretty easy, isn't it? So we don't, actually, we don't actually refinance it, we let the loan go to the end of its term. So the loan is done, we, and so when they're going in to buy this thing, they know the loan is only for one year. So it's not actually a refinance, they know it's going to finish, and during that time then they go and do other things, and we're going to show you that. And it's got to have a clear exit strategy. How, how are you going to get out? Sell the property? I don't know, what are you going to, how are you going to get out? Okay, lease stock. Has anyone heard of these ones? <laughs> lease stock? So remember we had no, no doc? There's all these doc loans, isn't there? Low doc, no doc, doc, doc. For the doctors. Yeah? <laughs> okay. So a lease stock, this is where the only thing that the, the lender's going to look at is the lease. There's no tax returns. So it's similar to a no-doc loan. This is similar to a no-doc loan, but this one here is you've got to turn up with the lease. So you can be working, not working. You can be doing anything you want. They don't really care. You can have as many properties as you want. As long as you've got clean, even if you don't have clean credit, you should have clean credit. We haven't done a non-clean credit loan for a long time, but you can, you can have as many properties as you want. As long as you turn up with what? The lease and the deposit. It's the lease. No bass, no pay slips, no accountants. We don't need you on this one, Parvina. You're stepping out of this one. <laughs> so you don't like this loan, right? <laughs> but you do the low dock ones. Okay. So this is for investors that have got lots of properties, residential properties. You can have as many as you want. Doesn't matter about servicing. They're not. They're not worried. So it's all about who? Lease. The lease, the tenant. Correct. The lease, which is the tenant. So we want a good. So if it's all about the lease, we want a good lease, right? Good quality tenant. It's got to be unrelated. It can't be your uncle. It can't be your wife. <laughs> all right. <laughs> It can't be any related to you. It's got to be third party. And they're going to find out. They're going to find out. So it's got to be what we call true arm's length. And they're going to look at the tenant because that's all they've got. They want to know a little bit about the tenant. The stronger the lease, the better. Normally about three years. Tenant pays all the outgoings. It's going to have 12 months to run. And we like to see a net yield of 7%. And the interest needs to be covered. So it's going to happen, isn't it? 7%. So where's the property going to be? 
We're not going to do these out the back of nowhere. We have, if the lease was strong, but the rate was higher. We have done them. Sort of three, four hours in there, we can do them. If it's a good tenant and it's strong. But generally we want to see them in or near a major metro area. That's what's saying here, regional properties with loading. So we can still do them if you want to go way out. So if you've got a 9% nine, nine yield, if we still, still do this at 55 6%, they're still making money. No specialised securities. It's saying that it is possible we can do them, but we generally we try not to encourage you to do these, like service stations and that. Keep away. Anything like service stations, keep away from. Start simple. Remember this presentation is about simple? Stay simple. If someone's trying to sell you service stations, not yet. Not yet. Normal commercial property, there you go. Offices, this is what Helen was talking about before. Remember she had on board? Offices, retail, and industrial, we do slightly reduced LVR. So what do they lend, what's the cost? There's an application fee, valuation of legals, normally 45 to 75% of the, of the property. Normally we do two thirds, one third, 65%. And here's your rate, look at the spread on that. From four and a half to about 6.8. And remember, this is just off the lease. So if you've find a, if you got the deposit and you find a property that's got a 7% yield, are you making money? You've got to be, right? Because you know what, what your cost is in here. Company borrow, this came back to the question before. We normally see these done in a company as trustee for a trust. We can do them in a personal name, but if you do them in a personal name, your rate will be higher. The loan term normally equals the lease term. Sometimes we can go longer. Bank versus non-bank, so we can use them both. And it's for property investors. So for this thing here, what do you think we need to see? It's telling you the lease. Yep. So what's the two documents we ask for? The IM, get a feel of what's going on, okay. and the lease. Again, is that a extra yep, yep. You can have principal and interest if you want. You can have fixed, you can have variable. And they're really fast. Why are they fast? Because it's just about the lease. It's not that hard, right? Easy. Is that easy? Okay. So let's do the property that you had over here, the sheet. Let's do this if it, if it was a lease stock loan. So can you see this property that Helen's found? It's ticking all these boxes. Didn't matter what this customer had, this was going to get financed because it's such a good deal. You could have used any of these loans. Here's your money out. 65. There's the rent, 60,000. Here's your loan coming out again. Positive cash flow again. 3,000 a month. So this person, all they had was the lease and the deposit. And that's what they're making now. Are these real people we're talking about? Real people, right? Real people. Okay. Uplift. Does this look exciting? See, it's the end of the day, we've got to give you uplift. <laughs> well, I need this as much as you do, all right? Saturday after, that's a tough gig, isn't it? What's the time? It's after five on a Saturday afternoon. She's a hard taskmaster. This is how, this is how Helen rolls. This is it. She gets it done. She gets it done. She, Helen, I'm, I'm here, she works literally night and day. She doesn't have to, but you know why she does? Because she loves what she does. Andrew will tell you, she works night and day. She doesn't stop. You get texts at four in the morning. I'm at the back of the room and she says, Graham, why are you idle? It doesn't stop. That's what Helen's like, all right? <laughs> so if you're going to get on board with her, it's, it's like the bullet train, okay? It's exciting. It's really, really exciting. Okay, so what we're going to do here with the uplift, so what's happening with the rocket? Everyone's getting memorised by the rocket. What's happening with the rocket? So what we're going to do now is we're going to tell you, don't worry about anything I've just told you. This property's got no cash flow. Now remember we did before, it's on a case-by-case -case basis. And it had different values. And we had one gentleman for vacant. All the other buyers were out of the room. Remember that? Only one, you're the brave one. From now on, you're the brave one, <laughs> all right? Only one. So what sort of price do you think he got the property at? He got cheap. 
So this one here is not a cash flow deal. This is one of Helen's other strategies. Remember she has cash flow for buying stuff and making you the income? And what do you have on your accounts? You have the income and the profit and loss and you have a balance sheet, correct? And what do you have in the balance sheet? The assets where they go up in value, right? Which is what you want. So this here is about nothing to do with income. It's about buying under value, doing something and making it better. So it's vacant. So you think you've got to be brave to do this? <laughs> you're brave, you're in. <laughs> you've got to make sure these work. You've got to make sure. Tenant on a month to month lease. So you have these different values. So now we're going to talk about the top one. Did you see that guy briefly? That's what a professional property investor looks like. Do you want to see him again? <laughs> That's a professional property investor. Just for you. Done? <laughs> okay. What's this guy down the bottom here? He's a professional property investor. See the hat? Yeah? Have a look at the deal he's done. It's all about the numbers. It's all about the numbers. Look at this deal. This is a deal that Helen found, and it's down in Tweed Heads, right? Just over the border. It had 12 tenancies, seven were tenanted, and five were vacant. <laughs> he went, to, he went to, to someone else to go and get finance on this deal. The bank said, no, we're not in it. That's too risky. This is true. They said, no, no, we, we, we're not going to do it. Get some tenants and we can do it. Well, hello. That's why he's doing it, right? So Helen got me to go in there. I didn't actually know what this deal was really until I went in there. I didn't actually know what the deal was. And when I sat down with them and I looked at the numbers... I said to him, are these, is this really what's, what's really going on? And he says, yeah, yeah, this is, this is, this is, this is it. I said, well, whatever you do, because he had an exchanger, I said, don't, don't tell your friends it's no good. It's no good. <laughs> because if they find this, someone's going to get it. He said, look what he did. Okay. So here, here was the uplift. So he bought it for 750 Remember, it's come down from 850 and if this, this brave guy here, you're going to step in and you're going to buy this, this is the opportunity you've got. Because look at them, they all wouldn't come in. <laughs> this is where you want to be looking. Look, they wouldn't come in. But you know what, once it's all leased out, you reckon they'll come in? Look how many buyers you'll have. <laughs> the whole room. <laughs> okay, so here it is. So he bought it for 750 multi tenanted that's a bit funny, really, isn't it? Because it was 12 tenancies, six vacant. Another was leaving. This is true. As we were doing the finance, there was another leaving. And then cop this. All the rest were finishing at the end of the year. <laughs> is this a real deal? We showed you the guy. It's not makeup, it's real. So they're all finishing. Went to the bank, said, Yeah, this is a great deal. This guy had good, solid income. It's fine. He was a full dot customer. He could, he could service the vacant properties. Here it was. Purchase price is 750 Stamp duty and legals. Buyer's agent in here. Refurb. So he spent about 40000 Now this is, you know when you're talking before about development? This is not development. Just so we're very clear, this is not about development finance. This is like doing the carpets, paint, whatever. 40,000, so his total money out was 842,500. Okay, so that was total expense. So 70% of the loan, and he put in 317,000. I think he may have sold a property, I'm not sure where it came from, but that's what he put in. Because remember, what does he have to do? He's just got to find the deposit. <laughs> remember, we tell him to find the deposit. So he found this. 
There's the rent, it was 54000 That was from the tenants that were left. Can you believe that? This is after half of them were left. So was this thing still positive? Even though they were leaving, this thing was still positive. This was like for Helen, this was just ticking all the boxes. It was just ticking them all. And even when we went to the bank, they said, look, even though they're, 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 there's not much left there, it's still positive right now today. And we know he's going to do something. He's not going to let, let this go. So it was still positive, nearly 30000 a year. So what, by the time he does his bits and pieces, he gets better management in there. Because at the moment, I think it was a residential property manager managing it. Does his refurb, does his marketing, tidies it up, starts to give the place a bit of a vibe. This is, we think it's going to probably be worth 1.1 million. Conservative, how do you say that? Conservatively, all right? It's late. At least 1.1 million. We think it's probably going to be closer to 1.2. And how much did he put in the deal? You got it at the top there. Total money out. Because remember, he's done some refurb as well. 842. You see that at the top? That's how much he's paid. And that's what it's worth at the bottom here 1.1, or will be. I'm not sure where it's up. Maybe we should check actually where this is up to. Fully leased, how much is he going to get? So we talked before about 2000 a month. This one here is 7500 a month. And you saw how he's a professional property investor, right? You saw him. He had the cap on. He's a professional property investor, right? Not big suits or anything. Just normal guy. Young, got age on his side. And he has got a capital gain here of about a quarter of a million. So we're getting excited now. The numbers are starting to creep up, right? So we showed you about cash flow. You can get income. Yeah. And we're going to show you this one here is about the asset going up in value. So what's he going to say now? What's, what's the next thing he's going to say? I want my money back. Because everyone wants money back guarantee, right? So he's saying, okay, I want my money out. Give me my money back. And why does he want his money back? He's going to do another deal. Who do you think he's going to ring? Helen, give me another one. <laughs> this deal here has changed his life. This one deal will change his life. And he's only going to do one of these a year. And he's going to be set up. Even one every two years. Okay, so he wants his money back. So how's he going to get his money back? So once it's all leased up, it's all painted and everything else, we've got tenants in there, and he's probably going to give them some incentives to get the tenants in there, maybe a bit of free rent or anything, just get tenants in there, it's going to value it at about 1.1. We're going to do a loan now off the new value, not the old value, and in commercial you can do this as quick as you want. You don't have to wait a year or whatever. As soon as this thing is ticking over, you can go again because the value will value it at the current market value because the thing has changed. Substantially. 770, his current loan's 525. So he's going to get another 245 to start paying him back. So his original contribution was 317,000. Remember that? But because this thing is now valued up, he's going to get back from the bank, or he's going to get extra, 245 to, to pay him. So he's going to get that. So how much has he put in now? 72,000 and he's got a property worth at least 1.1 million and it's positively geared and everyone goes oh is he going to sell it <laughs> come on <laughs> is he going to sell it of course he's not he's, he's getting his money out he's got a property it's the dream isn't it <laughs> why would he want to sell it they always ask us oh once it's finished are we going to sell it Keep it. Do another one. So he's got a capital gain of a quarter of a million. And he's positive about $1,000 a week. So this is an uplift property. Okay. So is, now, is there any questions on that at all? Because that's a completely different scenario to the cash flow one. So we've said about cash flow monthly. This, here, this one here is very lumpy. It's done once a year, once every two years. Question, hey, we'll get the microphone. 
you haven't mentioned it, but suppose he wasn't 23 or whatever he was. Mm -hmm. He was 70 years of age. Mm -hmm. Would it make any difference? Okay, so let's talk about that, which is in the slides, and we need to put it in there. So to get these loans, you're looking at one of two things. You're either strong with income, which is normally a PA, what we call a PAYG person that gets payslips. And, and I'm going to come to your question, I'll, I'll answer you. Or they're self-employed or not working and they've got a large deposit. Because remember before we said we could do a loan sign and go at 6.5% or whatever? So the answer is it's not driven by age. Anyone can do it as long as they're one of those two, two things. That's a really good question. So they're actually looking at the deal more than they're looking at you. But if you're saying, no, no, we, 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 you know, we're not so strong over here, but we have a large deposit, then you can do it. So these deals are either large deposit or strong servicing. Okay, any other questions on that? Okay. Quarter of a million dollars. It's not bad. I should have got that deal. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what you're thinking, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I've got caps, I didn't bring them today. <laughs> that's what you're thinking. I should have got that deal. Well, go and get it, there's more out there. He can, this, he's, he's tied up now for the next year, two years. Do you think the deals have stopped? They're still there. Everyone thinks that, oh, the commercial, you know, everyone's coming in now, they're all coming in. But you know what, there's lots of commercial properties for sale. You can buy anywhere in Australia. It's a big place. Okay, final thing. Because remember we talked about free money. We are talking about free money. So what do you think's going to happen going forward? Do you think it's going to get better or worse? It's going to get better. You think? So if pro who, thinks, who thinks the interest rates are going to go up in the next year? Who thinks they're going to stay the same? Got a few. Who thinks they're going to go down? Ah, they're going to go down. All right. So what's going to happen to your income? Let's have a look at this. Okay, so let's draw this because this is really important. Now I'm just hoping this isn't permanent because the last time I did this, it stayed on there. <laughs> Someone had to clean it up. Okay. Probably about the straightest, okay? And we did the loan. And that million dollars includes your stamp duty and everything. That's the cost. Let's just call this the cost. And so we did a loan on here. And assume, just assuming, and we didn't, but assuming we did 100%, we did that loan at 4 percent say 4.9, okay? I think it actually had 4.7 or something on there. So let's say so that's four, so how much is it? It's 49,000. This is for any investor now, this is for anyone. This is a normal mum and dad cash flow deal, right? So we've got 80,000 coming in from the tenant. Is the tenant in there locked in on a lease? Yeah, how long? Probably three years, right? So what here is, We'll call it profit. I'm hesitant to use profit. I don't like profit. Let's, let's call this money in. This is your money, right? So what, how much are you receiving on this deal? 31. You agree with that? Yeah. That's what this investor's getting. Okay, so who wants some free money? Who wants some free money? Yes. Who wants some free money? Yes. <laughs> okay. This is real. This is real, real people doing it. So Helen's, and there's a naught missing. <laughs> okay. This is really going on. We were at a room full the other night and the people were all smiling. I'm letting you know why they're smiling. If Helen's put this person into this property over the last year, two years, this is what the interest rate is. But, 
What's happened to the interest rates in the last few months? They've come down. So now this guy is at 4.2%. So how much does this cost now? 42,000. Is that right? 42? Um, we're assuming 100% here. It won't be 100%, but I'm just giving you an idea. 42,000? Another naught. I might have to go to a doctor here. <laughs> okay, 42,000. So what's happened to his income? Or her income? We do a lot of ladies. A lot of ladies. The guys, you just sign, get used to it. We do lots of them. So it's now 38. Three zeros. 38,000. What did this investor do to get an increase in income? Is that free money? Is it free money? I'm serious. Did, what did this investor do? Didn't do anything. They reckon I can do that. Hey? Nothing. This is really going on. So we had a room for all these people that Helen had put into all these properties over the years. This is what's going on. Not only are they getting the yield, the rates are coming down. So if you think the next rate's going to come down, if you think, I don't know what you think, and you think it's going to be now down even 0.2, 4%? What's going to happen to your income? How much is it going to be? 40000 And what's it going to cost you to get that? It's free. <laughs> is this making sense? <laughs> People don't believe us. It's free money. It's really going on. And she's locked. Helen's put all these people into properties... What do you think is going to happen to Helen's business in the next year or so? <laughs> They're going to want more. <laughs> They're going to come back. If she can do this once, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to come back. So if we learn about free money, it's real, right? These investors, as long as you're getting this, these investors did nothing. And they're doing nothing. And each time the rates come down, they're making more money. And everyone goes, oh, but because the economy's bad. This tenant's locked in here on a lease. What's going to happen to his business if the rates are going down? Two things. Correct. Do you hear that? Two things. Number one, probably his business is going to go up because they're going to spend more. But even his costs are going to go down. Because the rates are going down, right? So he's naturally going to be more profitable, you'd think. So is that exciting? Surely that's exciting. Yeah? <laughs> well, I get excited about it. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's what's going to happen. So how do we get on to this? So this is your free money. It's literally happening now to all, all, all the students that have come in before. And they're just getting more money into their bank account each month. It's just dropping in each month. So if you think the rates are going to go down, there's opportunity here for you now. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm telling you what's probably going to happen. This is, this is, the, this is the opportunity. Okay. Where do we get up to? So we've done this. Is this beeper working? Stop working. Here we go. So the income set. So that's what we said here. Tenants in here on the lease. However, your loan costs have gone down, so you earn even more income. Of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So that's a question probably for Helen. She could probably answer that better than better than me. The question. No, it just depends on where you've bought. So the rent only changes if the area or the rent is inflated over that time or if the area has changed dramatically. So 
it's got nothing to do with that. Um, so the finance is your finance. The yield or your rent is your rent for that area. So, for example, if you bought in Sydney, the rent rarely go backwards. <laughs> it pretty much just goes forwards. Um, when you're in regional, depending on where you are in regional, most of the time regional sort of goes pretty steadily. They, they, it doesn't go up and down. So they're pretty steady. Um, it only happens if you are in an area and there's a lot of things pulling out, the dramatic things have changed, and you know, you're all of a sudden finding that there's three or four, like 30 to 40 percent vacancies around you. Then you have to drop the rents. Most of the time, if there's a rent adjustment, it's very slight. Maybe at most 10 percent. Yeah, it's hardly likely to be like a 40 percent drop. Yeah. Okay, so that's about the. F that's there you go. So is it free money? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> People don't believe us when we say it's free money. They still don't get it. So I'm saying the opportunity you've got now, if you think rates are going to go down, this here, the, this, what's happening now with the interest rates coming down, there's going to be some effect with the property values, right? It's going to be interesting how it plays out. But what you know in the room now is if you think the rates are going to come down, when you're doing that deal today, there could even be more margin in there. So you think you're going to get 2000 a month if the rates come down and you didn't do anything? Probably maybe 3,000, who knows. Okay, so more income. So summing up, questions. Quarter to six on Saturday evening, very quick questions for everyone. <laughs> All good? I got it, you want to go, right? <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Well, <laughs> that free money didn't get home yet. <laughs> so who's excited about free money? Yes? Great. All right, on that note, get excited. Go home, do your homework. Do your homework. Um, tomorrow, I'll see you here bright and early, 9 a.m., ready to go again. Exciting day with just me. <laughs> All right, good night, everyone.